Well, greetings, everyone. My name is Judah, and welcome to Sunday Extra. Now, August was Missions Month at CCF. And we saw what God was doing in and through CCF, not just here locally, but worldwide. And we also received that charge ourselves of being missional, of going beyond and going viral with the good news. And then last Sunday, we capped it off by celebrating 36 years of honoring God and making Christ committed followers who make Christ committed followers. See, there's one thing that August made evident that CCF is all about fulfilling the Great Commission, which we find in Matthew 28, verse 18 to 20. Let's read. And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. If there's one thing that CCF wants to see, not just in this nation, but all the nations, is to see them discipled by the master teacher himself, who's gentle and humble in heart, whose yoke is easy and whose burden is light. But this cannot happen until we first understand what the gospel is. The gospel is the very hinge on which the doors of eternity open. It's the good news of the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Redeemer. Yet, this gospel shines even more brightly on the black canvas of its antithesis, the bad news. Like a diamond that sits on a black velvet cloth, it's made more visible. And this bad news is what Pastor Peter called the root of all human misery in last Sunday's anniversary message. And that, my friends, is what we call sin. The Bible speaks of sin as missing the mark of crossing the line, a twistedness and perversion within oneself, an utter hatred for godly things. Susanna Wesley beautifully penned these words to define sin. Whatever weakens your reason impairs the tenderness of your conscience, obscures your sense of God, takes off your relish for spiritual things. Whatever increases the authority of the body over the mind, that thing is sin to you, however innocent it may seem in itself. Wow. Now, we live in a culture wherein positive thinking has become a mantra, making sin almost taboo. Nobody wants to talk about it. Nobody wants to hear about it. As if the very idea or the mentioning of it will contaminate your very life and your entire existence. But that idea begins with a false assumption that we were born winners and not sinners. That life on earth is completely good and any thought of evil is just an illusion. But as, as noble and as cool as that may sound, unfortunately, it's not true. It doesn't correspond to reality. Can you honestly take a look at the world we live in today and say that evil and sin, you know, that hatred for God does not exist and it's only an illusion? That it only comes into reality when you mention it? Or rather, is it part of the human condition, part of our fallen world? And that's why Jesus said it in Mark 10, 18, that no one is good except God alone. Or Paul in Romans 3, 10, when he told us, none is righteous, not one. See, that's why I'm a believer. That's why I'm a Christian. That's why I trust what the Bible says, because in it, this world and ourselves have been accurately diagnosed. It doesn't take a genius just to look out into our world to, and say that there's something wrong with what's happening. See, all of us, we have all fallen short of the glory of God. This world we live in is not the world that God had intended. We were all born into what theologians call the post three or post Genesis three reality. And what we really need is the John three sixteen vaccine. That's right. And we need to understand the love of God through 
his son's great sacrifice, which Romans 5, 8 tells us that Christ died for the ungodly at that perfect time. And that's why the gospel is the source of life. Sin is the plague of all plagues, and the gospel is the only antidote to it. The only thing that can provide the solution to the human malady and the root of all misery. It's crystal clear, brothers and sisters. Jesus Christ is our greatest hope. Only the Son of God is capable of saving humanity, saving those who would place their trust in Him. See, He's not just willing, but He's capable. Theologian Joel Beatty said this, not, not only does He hold out His hands, but He also takes sinners into His arms. Not only does He offer salvation, but He also secures salvation. Now, if that's the case, What's its implication? You know, growing up, one of my favorite quotes was said by the preacher and activist, Martin Luther King Jr. He says, those who have not found a reason to die for are unfit to live. Did you catch that? Those who have not found a reason to die for are unfit to live. See, the gospel is not just the hinge on which eternity opens. It's not just the source of life, but it is the very reason for living. And that's why we exist. That's why we journey on here at CCF. Because we want to see the gospel go to the ends of the earth. We want to do our part in helping the Great Commission become fulfilled. Through the power of the Holy Spirit. That's right. So now what? What's the therefore of my Sunday extra message? Well, two things I want to share with you. One, apologetics. And two, motivate. Now, apologetics. Well, what is apologetics? Apologetics is a reasoned defense or a rational reasoned defense for the Christian faith. When I came to Christ, there was one thing that I, um, you know, was struggling with the veracity and truthfulness of the claims of Jesus Christ. But when I did my research, when I studied, when I read the Bible for what it was worth, I came to realize that, and I came to realize by the grace of God, that Jesus is who he claimed to be, the Son of God and Savior of the world. And I gave my, you know, I gave my life to Jesus, and my life has never been the same. In fact, this is the life I was meant to live. And you know, I, I had to get rid of those debris and those doubts and those things that had gotten in the way of the cross of Jesus Christ. Now, apologetics is a tool in, a, in, in getting rid of all those things so that we can see the fullness of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Now, why am I saying that? Well, in a, several weeks ago, uh, GLC, alongside with RZIM, uh, we jump-started this um, incredible series called Making Sense of 2020. Now, I know, I'm about to give you some homework, but this might serve you. Now, I don't, there's a lot of people watching uh, this right now, hopefully a lot, uh, but it's either one, uh, you're dealing with doubts yourselves, or two, you're, you're engaging with people who have doubts, whoever you may be. I believe that what we have at the YouTube, uh, CCF YouTube page can help you in getting rid of the debris, the debris or helping people see Jesus for who he claimed to be. And we have a five-week series that you can uh, backtrack and begin. Uh, we started with an introduction to uh, apologetics. Making sense of 2020 was a theme and series. And uh, why is a thinking faith, why does a thinking faith matter? There you go, okay? That's the first series, uh, first um, episode. And after that, we had this thing called Kobe, Corona, and Chaos, which really deals with what's going on in, in, in the world we live in now with the pandemic and all. Uh, dealing with, you know, why would God allow suffering? And two, or three, uh, we had, what is truth? Like, you know, if, if Jesus did say all these things, is it true? Or was it just like, you know, make-believe? Is it a legend? So we deal with that question, what is truth? The week after that, we deal with the question of why Jesus amongst all these other gods in this world? And lastly, why can we trust the Bible? So go check those out and see how that can help you. Because when it comes to sharing the gospel, 
apologetics uh, becomes an indispensable tool. I once heard an apologist tell me this uh, when he was asked why apologetics matters so much. And he says, apologetics matters because the gospel matters. And the more that you share the gospel, the more that you meet people with hard questions. And those questions become harder and harder to the point that you want to be equipped to meet them uh, where they're at. So apologetics is a tool for that. Either one, like I said, you're still dealing with your own doubts and you want to find an answer to those doubts. Or two, you're meeting people who have that and you want to engage them with that. So what you can do right now is, like I said, go to the YouTube channel and check out Making Sense of 2020. It's an incredible, incredible series and I'm sure you'll be blessed by that. Now two, the last thing I want to share with you is Motivate. Now this week, we are kicking off the campaign Motivate of bringing the gospel to your home. That's right. And for me, um, I, took that, I took that on. Uh, last Father's Day, I initiated this whole thing where, you know, I, I want to take responsibility as a father, as being the priest of my home, of sharing the gospel or sharing God's word to my children. And every day, we read the Bible. Yeah, not week, not all the weekends, not on once a week, no, but daily. I want to make sure that they understand that the words of Jesus Christ, the words of the Bible, is truly life and soul nourishment. And there's nowhere else that we can go, uh, you know, other than the Bible to live out uh, the life that we were meant to live. So that's what I want to encourage you. If the gospel is the greatest hope, as what we have argued right now, then guess what? then there's no time to wait but to bring the greatest hope, the good news of salvation, to your home. So I challenge you, take it on. Bring the gospel to your family and let the, God, uh, let the love of God be your motivating factor. Okay? Well, I hope, that was, I hope the, this video served uh, to, to bless you with some insight and bring your heart great delight, knowing that Jesus truly is our greatest hope. Now, um, if you want to chat with us, uh, do check out or jump onto Facebook Messenger, and we would love to hear from you, pray with you, talk with you, get to know you, and journey on with you. And if you want to continue getting more um, resources from CCF, then check out the CCF Facebook page for more um, inspiring and encouraging content. And also watch um, the full Sunday message from last week, and also tune in to the one that we're going to jumpstart this week. Like I said, we're starting a campaign called Motivate, so you don't want to miss that. So I hope you're blessed. My name is Judah, and hopefully I'll see you again on another Sunday Extra. God bless you all.